Starting off this countdown, we have Ollie Murs. Singer songwriter Ollie Murs should have been off of TikTok years ago following a very controversial video that he posted. In the video, he cut the bottom off of a Pringles can so that it was removed completely. He then proceeded to slip it onto his, you know, eggplant and then asked his girlfriend if she wanted some chips. When she reaches in, well, you can only imagine what she felt, and she pulled out her hand in disgust. I think this video scarred everyone. One person tweeted out saying, Not even 9 a.m. and Ollie Murs has ruined my day. Never checking why a celeb is trending again. Other people commented saying that they are scarred for life and that they need help unseeing that video. And I agree. No, thank you. That was way too much. In our ninth spot today, we have Madonna. Recently, Madonna has been posting some weird TikToks that have left her fans confused and unsettled. The TikTok that received the most backlash was posted a couple of days ago, just before the 2022 Grammy Awards. In the TikTok, Madonna, who no longer looks like herself or her age, is shown coming closer and closer to the camera while pouting her lips. Now, it does appear as if she has a filter on, because her eyes look completely gray or glazed over. The comments on this video showcase just how unsettled it made them feel. The top comment reads, This honestly scared me, not gonna lie. Another commented, Stay back. A third commented, It's becoming more than embarrassing at this point. Another, Who is this? Doesn't look like Madonna. Fans are concerned for Madonna, saying that she's trying too hard to seem youthful to the point that it's scaring them. Coming in at number eight, we have Northwest. Now, I'm sure you guys are all aware of the whole Kim Kardashian, Kanye West TikTok drama. If not, here's a little recap. Kanye West does not feel comfortable with his eight-year-old daughter on TikTok, whereas Kim said that she's completely fine with North being on TikTok as she supervises it. In response to Kanye calling her out, she said, and I quote, as the parent who is the main provider and caregiver for our children, I'm doing my best to protect our daughter while also allowing her to express her creativity in the medium that she wishes with adult supervision because it brings her happiness. Now, the TikTok account is labeled as North and Kim's account. It's a joint account. But still, some say that she's way too young to be on the platform. I mean, I believe you have to be 13 years or older in order to create an account. And like I said, North is only eight. Not only is TikTok fairly damaging for young influential minds, but also puts them at risk for prayers. In our seventh spot today, we have Jake Paul. I guess Jake Paul is trying to relive the good old Vine days by having a TikTok account. Let me know in the comments below, are you team Vine or TikTok? Which platform do you like better? Honestly, I'm team Vine, sorry. Anyways, Jake has posted a number of interesting TikToks. The most recent one being him punching the Rockets mascot at an NBA game. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you're a fan of Jake Paul, but uh, his TikToks are questionable. Either it's him bragging about his boxing career or making cringy TikToks that aren't funny. However, it looks like he's got a lot of haters on his TikTok. They just want him off the platform for good. In our sixth spot, we have Tana Mojo, another very controversial content creator and influencer that people want off TikTok, especially after she posted a number of videos that featured herself eating some nasty food combination items like a hot pickle from a gas station in which she wrapped in a rainbow fruit roll up and then topped it off with a talkie. You got all the flavors there, spicy, sweet, and salty. I don't know how I feel about that combo though. I think probably be eating that in the bathroom. Anyways, she's also known to just post random crazy videos that make no sense. Like this one. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Jason Derulo. <laughs> Jason Derulo's TikTok is filled with the most random videos. From him reacting to viral videos, to dance videos, to cooking videos, to raunchy comedy videos, to pranks. He does it all. I mean, I'm sure you've seen that viral video of him pretending to lose his teeth after eating a corn on the cob attached to a power drill. This dude is just exuding chaotic energy. And a lot of people love making fun of him for it. You either love or you hate his TikTok. But I will say, there's been a number of times he has embarrassed the heck out of himself on TikTok, but it doesn't seem like he cares one bit. In our fourth spot, we have Will Smith. Will Smith is currently trending following the incident at the Oscars in which he slapped Chris Rock. We've all seen the clip by now. It's been talked about by crazy, okay? Well, following that incident, people are super against Will. In fact, he has been losing, but then also gaining social media followers. But the TikToks Will has posted in the past no longer look good on him, especially ones featuring his wife Jada and him simping over her, as people like to call it. People are arguing that Will's actions at the Oscars highlight toxic masculinity. Will made it seem like the slap was done out of his love for Jada, but still, violence in any form is not okay. 
so people think Will should be banned from TikTok, or at least have some of his TikToks that don't paint a good picture of him removed or privated. In our third spot today, we have Howie Mandel. What's worse than that Madonna video? Howie Mandel reacting to the Madonna video. We see the video of Madonna playing in the background with the mini Howie in front reacting to it. As Madonna's lips come closer to Howie, he says, oh stop, that tickles. Okay, Elmo, settle down. It's pretty unsettling. And he has a lot of unsettling videos. Like the video of him stitching himself with a video of Doja Cat. They're both just too close for comfort, you know? And of course, how could I not mention the frozen yogurt TikTok, where we see a woman eating frozen yogurt off of Howie's bald head. Okay, that's enough for anyone to lose their appetite. In our second spot today, we have Bella Thorne. Over the years, Bella Thorne has completely changed. She went from being an innocent Disney star to posting exclusive content to creating and directing a movie, which no shame on her. She's just coming to terms with herself and who she wants to be. Now, Bella also just posts the most random TikToks, a lot with other adult content creators. In the videos, you can see them getting into intimate and touchy. But then you have random videos like this, where Bella is using her own song as the audio and uh, the ending takes an interesting turn, to say the least. A lot of comments are saying that she needs to calm down and that her TikToks are messy and that she's trying too hard. And in our number one spot today, we have James Charles. First off, James is making headlines again as he was seen attending the 2022 Grammys. People are outraged that he was invited due to his controversial past and accusations of multiple underage boys. People were tweeting saying things like this and I quote, James Charles being at the Grammys this year tells me everything I need to know about their invitations. Another person expressed their confusion over a literal predator being there instead of artists like Ariana Grande. Those were their words. Anyways, people are coming for James and they want legal actions to be taken against him. One person commented, how is James going everywhere but jail? So you can imagine why people want him off of TikTok. Not just for his past, but also because they say his TikToks are cringy. Literally, James gets hate on every TikTok he shares, saying that they are absolutely horrendous and making fun of his dancing. Others argue that TikTok is another platform that lets him reach out to under- Boys. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below. Do you have TikTok? Celebrity talk show fails that never should have aired. Do you remember watching any of these failed talk shows? Which one do you think deserves another chance? And which talk show do you think should have never even been considered? I want to hear all of your celeb talk show thoughts in the comments. At number 10, The Queen Latifah Show. Dana Owens, known professionally as Queen Latifah, is a rapper and actor born in New Jersey. Latifah has appeared in Last Holiday, Taxi, and most recently, The Equalizer. Unlike most of the celebs on this list, the actor actually gave the talk show hosting gig two tries, both of which did not last long. Both shows shared the same name and the original The Queen Latifah show ran from September 1999 to August 2001. Definitely a better run than most shows I'm going to mention. The original was described as a, the Dear Abby for the hip hop generation. The series covered various topics and included interviews with both celebrities and non-celebrities. Then more than a decade after it was cancelled, The Queen was back. The revamped Queen Latifah's show debuted September 2013 and was even renewed in January 2014 for a second season, but that's about it. In November 2014, Sony Pictures TV cancelled the Queen Latifah show due to declined ratings. I don't think the show was horrible, I just don't think it had anything special to compete with other talk shows. It unfortunately didn't work out for Queen Latifah once again, but her talk show run was still far better than the people I have coming up next. Number 9, The Wanda Sykes Show. Wanda Sykes is a comedian, actress, and writer. In 2004, Entertainment Weekly named Sykes as one of the 25 funniest people in America. Fox debuted The Wanda Sykes Show in November 2009. Comedian Keith Robinson co-starred as her sidekick. The show was very meh from what I gather and the 50% rating it has on Rotten Tomatoes only confirms my theory. Brian Lowry from Variety said, The Wanda Sykes Show is off to a decidedly shaky start. The program opens by flashing a big W on the screen, which presumably stands for Wanda. Yet after this first hour, one might as easily be tempted to to read it as why. The show stayed on the air for only one season and in May of 2012, Fox made the announcement and this left the network with no original late night programming for the first time since 1994. I think executives at Fox only saw her comedic talent but didn't think about the fact that hosting a show is a whole nother skill set on its own. Unfortunately, Sykes just doesn't possess what a good host needs. The show failed to get people laughing but that doesn't mean Sykes herself stopped bringing on the laughs. Luckily, the show didn't ruin her comedic reputation and the roles kept on 
rolling in. She may be a crappy talk show host, but most recently she was working on the show Blackish, and it went far better than the Wanda Sykes show. Number eight, cocktails with Chloe. I think Chloe Kardashian has the most recent failed talk show of the list. Kardashian rose to fame on the reality show Keeping Up with the Kardashians, along with her sisters and mother. Cocktails with Chloe premiered on the FYI cable channel on January 20th, 2016. The series hosted by Kardashian lasted only 14 episodes before getting the top. Unlike the other shows on the list, Chloe's ratings weren't too bad. They were nothing to write home about, but they weren't nearly as bad as others. Apparently, the real reason Cocktails with Chloe didn't get a chance at a second season was due to chaos behind the scenes. Insiders claim there was no agreement on the direction of the show, and Kardashian was not popular with staff. A source said it was chaos. Nobody agreed with anybody else about what it should be or what direction it should be going. Another source added, Chloe's used to being on a smash hit show and being able to call the shots, but it's not like that on a small show. Eventually, everyone had enough. It's too bad because considering the medium response to the first season, it really had potential to become something big for Chloe. She had guests on like John Legend and Chrissy Teigen, Kanye West and Cardi B. But despite having the ingredients for a good talk show, it could have used a few more minutes in the oven. At number 7, Thick of the Night. He was a Canadian actor known best for his time on Growing Pains. Long before his Growing Pain days, Thick hosted a successful Canadian daytime talk show called The Alan Thick Show from 1980 to 1983. Since he was doing so well in Canada with his show, he was offered another talk show, this time in the United States. Thick of the Night was intended as a rival to The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, and it debuted in September 1983. The show had a major publicity campaign, but despite this, critics were not kind to its unorthodox blend of stand-up comedy, sketch comedy, and talk show. The format did end up becoming the staple of late night talk shows, but at the time it just wasn't what people wanted to see. Thick of the Night also featured musical performances, including the television debut of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. As the season progressed, more and more stations dropped the show. Mid-season it was revamped to more closely resemble Thick's original talk show in Canada, but they were too late. Unfortunately, the show couldn't be saved and it was cancelled in June 1984. The late actor said, Thick of the Night was supposed to challenge Johnny Carson. They said it couldn't be done and I was the guy they chose to prove it. The show was ahead of its time. It should have been on in 2084 when all of us are gone. I do think Thick was ahead of his time, but it ended up being a good thing it got cancelled with him landing his role on Growing Pains just a year later. Number 6, The Megan Mullally Show Megan Mullally, actor, comedian and singer is known for her iconic role as Karen Walker on Will and Grace. She was given her own talk show, The Megan Mullally Show, which debuted in September 2006 and was cancelled not long after in January 2007. I will say the logo for her show is my fave out of them all, but having a good logo was about all she had. Her very first episode featured actor Will Ferrell wearing nothing but his briefs and Jenny McCarthy, but even still the show did not generate the ratings that were hoped for. The ratings for her show are in the middle somewhere. I think it was less flat out bad and more underwhelming. Fox News called the show a bit dull and ordinary and at times forced. Once again, we're learning that hosting a show is a talent and no matter how funny or liked a person is, it doesn't mean they'll thrive in that position. Another thing Fox News said about the talk show was that viewers were disappointed to find out that Megan is nothing like Karen in real life. That's one thing about people being fans of actors, do you really like the person playing the character or is it the fictional character you're drawn to? One viewer of the show said, Megan Mullally was never funny. Karen Walker was, thanks to the writers and Megan for doing a fantastic job delivering what was written. Therefore, the show should have been the Karen Walker show. I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm sure it was a bummer for Mullally when it was cancelled, but then again, it's because she did such a good job as Karen that the ratings were so low. At number 5, Lopez Tonight. The comedian and actor has had a successful career in Hollywood. So successful that at one point he had a scripted sitcom on ABC titled George Lopez. After the show wrapped up six seasons, Lopez was offered his own talk show called Lopez Tonight. The actor became the first Mexican American to host a late night talk show on an English language network in the United States. Lopez Tonight made its debut on TBS in November 2009. The first episode had guests Kobe Bryant and Eva Longoria, as well as a special appearance from Ellen DeGeneres. The show aired Monday through Thursday at midnight following Conan. Despite his success in his self titled sitcom, Lopez just couldn't stay on air. Actually, Conan is partially the reason Lopez Tonight had such a short run. In 2010, Conan O'Brien announced that he'd signed with TBS to create his own late night talk show that would be premiering at 11 p.m. Unfortunately, Lopez just couldn't compete with the ratings from Conan, and since they were playing back to back on the same network, they could really compare the success of each show. After a year of airing Conan, TBS announced in 2011 that Lopez Tonight would be cancelled, with the final episode airing the following night. Conan went on to be successful for over a decade, airing its last season in 2021. I wonder if the results would differ had Lopez landed that 11 o'clock spot. At number 4, Chris. Chris Jenner is maybe one of the most powerful. 
powerful women in Hollywood when it comes to getting stuff done. I truly believe that the Kardashian family would have been old news after a year or two if it weren't for Chris. She has taken the Kar Jenner women and turned them into some of the biggest names in Hollywood without an ounce of acting or musical talent I might add. Jenner once said that it was her dream to have a talk show like Oprah. Since she's Kris Jenner, it was a pretty easy dream to make happen. Fox gave Jenner her own show called Kris in 2013. Kris only aired in 6 metro areas and she pulled out all the stops for big ratings, including bringing on members of her family. Unfortunately, Jenner is not as good at hosting a talk show as she is at doing business. In a last ditch effort to renew her show, she had on her son-in-law at the time, Kanye West, to release the first ever photos of his daughter, Northwest. Unfortunately for Kris, it wasn't enough and the show was cut after just one season. Following the season, Jenner said, I had so much fun this summer making my dreams come true. After the show was cancelled, a source said viewers just tuned out and genuinely don't want to see her on daytime television in any format. A bit harsh, but the review matches the ratings. On IMDb from 500 reviews, the show sits at 1.3 out of 10. Although it didn't work out, at least Chris can add it to the list of things she's done and get back to reality TV. Number 3. Bethany Like many other reality stars and television personalities, Bethany Frankel wears a lot of hats. Probably most recognizable from her time on The Real Housewives of New York City, she has written self-help books and is the founder of the Skinny Girl Lifestyle brand. Frankel has quick wit and was self-appointed as the queen of too much information. That plus her being a standout on Real Housewives seemed like the perfect recipe for a juicy new talk show. Her show was called Bethany and it debuted 10 years ago in 2012. Unfortunately for Frankel, fans just couldn't quite get into it and the show was cancelled after only one season. Bethany has a 1 star rating on IMDb and despite her big name guests, viewers weren't sticking around. After her show was cancelled, Frankel herself admitted in her blog that the role of a talk show host wasn't the best fit for her. She wrote, Unlike my time on Bravo, I felt diluted, filtered, and somewhat constricted. I'm a free spirit. I'm more comfortable in my natural surroundings and in a setting where I'm surrounded by crazy, where anything goes and where I can be authentically me. So basically, she misses the drama she was able to cause on Real Housewives. Honestly, the two shows are totally different worlds, and Bethany proves that not just anyone can make a good fit for an interviewer. Number two, The Magic Hour. Irvin Johnson Jr., also known as Magic Johnson, is a former professional basketball player. Johnson is widely considered the greatest point guard of all time. He played 13 seasons in the NBA, and in 1998, Johnson received his own talk show called The Magic Hour. Unfortunately, the show did not live up to its name, and soon after it debuted, it began generating negative reviews from critics. They cited Johnson's apparent nervousness as a host and his overly complimentary tone with his celebrity guests. I mean, considering the man is famous for playing basketball, I don't know why they would think to put him on his own show to host. Johnson was also criticized for his lack of chemistry with his sidekick, comedian Craig Shoemaker. He was quickly replaced with Steve White with little change when it came to chemistry. One vocal critic of the Magic Hour was Howard Stern, often mocking the NBA player's diction and hosting abilities. In an attempt to confront Stern and boost ratings, they invited him on the Magic Hour. It didn't go well with Stern just criticizing Johnson further, but this time on his show. The episode with Stern did increase viewership for a time, but ratings quickly dropped off. After eight weeks, the show was cancelled. Johnson blamed the demise of the show on a lack of support from black celebrities who refused or were unable to appear on a show. Johnson said their managers and agents keep them off the black shows. Sorry Johnson, but I think the show just sucked. And at number one, The Chevy Chase Show. The actor rose to fame after becoming a key cast member in the first season of Saturday Night Live, where his recurring weekend update segment became a staple of the show. Things only rose from there after starring in National Lampoon's Vacation and the other movies that followed. He's had no shortage of roles over the years, but one venture he took back in the 90s did not pay off. In 1993, Chase was given his own talk show on Fox called The Chevy Chase Show. Unfortunately, his comedic charm did not translate into the talk show format, and the show was pulled faster than any of the shows on this list. The Chevy Chase Show was cut simply because it was bad. Advertisers had been promised that the show would bring in between 5 and 6 million viewers nightly. The show ended up producing much less than that, averaging fewer than 3 million viewers, and it was down to 2 during the show's final weeks. On Rotten Tomatoes, Chase's show has a big old 0% rating and critics did not hold back. Jay Boyer of the Orlando Centennial said, A flop sweat fest, if there ever was one, was so pathetic that Chase was reduced to making lame jokes about his own demise and no one was laughing. Vern Gay of the Newsday said, Viewers may recall a vomit scene in the premiere, a pitch perfect comment on the show itself. Luckily Chase had his previous works to save face and keep up his career, but the Chevy Chase show was a certified fail. That was the top 10 celebrity talk show fails that should have never aired. And just Justin Bieber. In 2013, the singer went on Zach Galifianakis' hilarious show Between Two Ferns. Like other
other celebrity interviews in the Funny or Die series, this one features vaguely offensive questions, awkward pauses and snide remarks. Zack starts off by saying, it's really exciting talking to you, especially in the middle of your public meltdown. He refers to Bieber as a year old and asks in the recording studio do you ever think what if I don't make something crappy and you've had three hairstyles what's next for your career despite the absurd questions both of them hardly crack so much as a smile and you could cut the tension in the room with a knife but the sit down also turns violent when Zach gets so fed up with Bieber's antics that he takes off his belt to spank him three times insisting that he had it with their punk attitude he then apologizes and says I don't really think spanking is a good thing but you're not a that's the point. You're not a so I can hit a grown man with a belt. Overall, this was one of the best episodes of Between Two Ferns. The show has given us some of the funniest and most cringeworthy moments that exist on the internet. There's just something about the low production value and the increasingly personal and offensive questions that get thrown at celebrities. The best part is that everyone's in on it, but you would never be able to tell. Number 9 Jim Carrey The 2017 New York Fashion Week Harper's Bazaar Icons Party was an event that plenty of famous faces attended, and Jim Carrey wound up popping in and making an appearance during the event. Eventually, he was interviewed and what followed was something so hilarious yet uncomfortable that you just have to watch it for yourself. The interview seemed like it was getting off to a good start, but it didn't take long for Carrie to give a response that no one saw coming. When he was asked about why he came, he said, there's no meaning to any of this. So I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could come to and join, and here I am. You've got to admit it's pretty meaningless. He then started walking in circles around the presenter, who was clearly in shock and maybe even had having an existential crisis. She then asked Carrie if he was an icon and he said, boy, that is just the absolute lowest aiming. You know, possibly that we can come up with. It's like icons. Do you believe in icons? I don't believe in personalities. I don't believe that you exist, but there is a wonderful fragrance in the air. The reporter looked at him like he was crazy, but viewers ended up praising the actor for his response, given that he turned what could have been a regular self-promotional interview into a chance to give his perspective on the absurdity of our existence. In many ways, it wasn't just funny, it was actually refreshing. Number 8 David Letterman Madonna stopped by the Late Show with David Letterman on March the 31st in 1994 for what would become a headline making interview. Her contempt for him was apparent from the moment that she sat down as she wasn't entertaining any of his sexual innuendos and suggestive comments. The drama that followed eventually made it the most censored episode in American TV network talk show history. The pop star came out ready to shock the world, cigar in hand and filter completely gone. Letterman is an easily fair but in 1994, Madonna managed to make him just the slightest bit uncomfortable. A minute into her appearance and he began teasing her about her sex life and asking her to kiss men in the audience and she responded by calling him sick and launched into a 20 minute long rant that was hardly PG. In fact, she said the F word a total of 14 times. Not only that, but the singer refused to get up from her seat once the interview was over and forced him to continue speaking to her in subsequent segments. But between the two of them, it's hard to say who was more out of line. It wasn't until 1996 that she revealed why the episode was so messy. She said, the way he introduced me was derogatory. So my whole thing was, okay, if that's how you want to play it, you cannot beat me at this game. Well, it's safe to say that she certainly did. Number seven, Kourtney Kardashian. For the Keeping Up with the Kardashian star, one of the biggest live TV fails came with her interview in 2016, just weeks after Kim Kardashian's horrific Paris robbery. In case you need a reminder, Kim was held hostage while her apartment was ransacked of 10 million million dollars worth of jewelry. Shortly afterwards, Courtney appeared on an Australian program called The Today Show to talk about her latest project before the hosts attempted to turn the conversation towards Kim. They said, we're very sympathetic and horrified. So we were wondering, how is everyone going? How is Kim doing? But right away, they realized that that was the wrong thing to say. Courtney's face went blank and she was clearly frustrated. She said, um, before looking at someone else in the room, most likely her publicist. An awkward silence ensued and she looked beyond the camera, muttering something under her breath about having someone come in. The presenters were confused at first before they realized what was going on. David Campbell asked, Hello Courtney, have we lost you? Before the silence became unbearable and her face disappeared off screen. He was obviously less than impressed by the loss of communication and said, I think she's totally blanking me on that question. She could just say her sister is fine. As for Courtney, she blamed the whole thing on a bad connection, but fans thought it was a hilarious way to avoid answering the question. Number six, Ellen DeGeneres. When music legends 
Celine Dion went on The Ellen Show in 2007, she probably didn't expect to have an extremely uncomfortable interview. The songstress was not in the least bit amused when she got criticized for the fact that her son had long hair. Ellen was trying to be funny when she brought up a photo of Renee Charles, who was six years old at the time. The picture showed a photo of a cute little boy with shoulder length hair. Ellen obviously thought that that was great material for a joke, so she asked Celine if she was forgetting to cut her son's hair, but she did not expect her to take the question to heart the way she did, and suddenly the tension in the room was so thick. Celine clearly felt attacked, and she asked Ellen if she had a problem with it. At this point, you could tell that she'd probably gotten that same line of questioning from countless other people who made it their business to inquire about her son's appearance. She said, some people shave the head of their children, and people say, oh, isn't that terrible? Well, I don't even cut my son's hair, and they say, oh my god, when is she going to cut her son's hair, you know? Whatever I will do, I won't please everyone. She explained that it was he who made his own decision to keep his hair long, but Ellen had already sensed that she'd made a mistake and swiftly changed the topic to Celine's music after the uncomfortable moment. Number 5, Cara Delvine. In the middle of a promotional tour for her film Paper Towns, the model appeared on Good Day Sacramento and went on to have one of the most awkward interviews ever. First off, the anchors called her Carla instead of Cara. Then they proceeded to ask her whether or not she had read the John Green book on which the movie is based and why she didn't seem more excited to be on the show despite making millions of dollars from the movie. But Cara was clearly not having it and pretty much refused to respond to their questions. Instead, she took a bit more of a sarcastic approach, but the anchors pushed right back and almost seemed to be mocking her the whole time. They said, you do seem a bit irritated, maybe it's just us. But when Cara agreed, the host said, we'll let you take a little nap and maybe get a Red Bull, essentially kicking her off the show. Despite being tired after the final premiere for her film the night before, Cara sold it on at first, but the show was clearly trying to embarrass her because she wasn't going to play ball with the patronizing questions. When the interview first came out, there was a bit of a debate over who started the awkwardness, as some people felt that Cara was acting entitled by refusing to answer those questions in an agreeable manner. But most would agree that she was simply having an off day and must have been exhausted from all the traveling and promotional interviews. Number four, Quentin Tarantino. During a press conference for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a female journalist asked the legendary director something that seemed to set him off. She brought up Margot Robbie's character Sharon Tate and inquired about her lack of lines in the film. She said, Quentin, you've put Margot Robbie, a very talented actress in your films. She was with Leonardo DiCaprio in Wolf of Wall Street. She was in I, Tonya, and yet you haven't really given her many lines in this movie. I'm guessing that was a very deliberate choice on your part, and I was just wondering, why was that? Why don't we hear her speaking very much? The question would have been an easy one to answer, as there were so many characters in the film, and naturally not all of them could get the same amount of screen time. But Quentin snapped back and refused to answer. He said, well, I just reject your hypothesis. Then Margot jumped in and seemed to save the moment. She said, I think the moments that I got on screen gave an opportunity to honor Sharon and the likeness. I don't think it was intended to delve deeper. I think the tragedy ultimately was a loss of innocence and to really show those sides of her, I think could be adequately done without speaking. I did feel like I got a lot of time to explore the character, even without dialogue specifically. When you watch the clip for yourself, there's no doubt that Margot definitely made the whole thing less awkward. Number three, Jimmy Kimmel. Fans love to look back at a viral video from 2015 when Nicole Kidman was a guest on Jimmy Kimmel Live. The host starts off by saying, I don't know if you remember this, but we've met before. In response, Nicole says, oh, I remember. But this is where the story gets interesting. Jimmy recalled walking around New York City when a friend called him up to tell him that Nicole was with him and was hoping to meet up. As he continues to ramble on, she stops him in his tracks and confesses that she used to like him. Jimmy becomes visibly shocked and flustered while saying, wait, what? What are you talking about? Did I date Nicole Kidman? Did we go on a date? The shock and embarrassment did not stop coming because then Nicole recalled the time that they met and said that he barely paid attention to her when she finally came over. Thanks to TikTok, the video recently gained traction and it never fails to make people laugh and think, what if? Because it sounds like these two could have almost dated if Jimmy had only known that Nicole was interested in him. To be fair though, he did seem pretty shocked when he heard the story from her perspective. So it's likely he had no idea how she felt at the time. Years later, fans still rave about this hilarious story and say that it's a perfect example of a missed opportunity. Well, I guess we'll never know if they would have ended up together. Number two, Julia Fox. Yes, a large part of Julia Fox's fame came from dating Kanye, but it was a viral clip of her saying the words uncut gems that launched her into meme status and made her the icon she is today. It all started when she went on the Call Her Daddy podcast and discussed her relationship with Kanye and her movie role. She said, I was Josh Safdie's muse when he wrote uncut gems. She wasn't saying anything out of the ordinary, but she went 
viral because of the way she said the film's title as Uncut Jams. And then suddenly it seemed like everyone hopped on that audio and wanted to make their own videos mocking her accent. Cara Delvine, Shay Michelle, Miranda Sings even hopped on the trend. Julia eventually acknowledged the online jokes and posted a comment saying, OMG, I was stoned, leave me alone. The actress gave the world yet another hilarious soundbite thanks to an interview that she gave at the 2022 Oscars, where she was asked almost condescendingly about who did her strong eye makeup that she was wearing to the event. In response, Julia says, I actually did it myself, yeah. And then her voice trails off into nothing. And of course, it wasn't long before TikTok got a hold of that audio and made it go viral. So far, over 130,000 people have used it. Many of them have recreated the iconic interview moment or used it as a way to joke about mistakes that they've made before. And coming in at number one, Tom Cruise. The couch jump on the Oprah Winfrey show in May of 2005 is one of the most memorable moments in talk show history. The actor was talking to Oprah about his new relationship with Katie Holmes, with whom he eventually married a year later. As soon as he came on the show, there was a loud cheer and applause from the audience, particularly women screaming their lungs out. The actor was left blushing and soon rather than sitting on the sofa, he sat down on the floor, pulled victory laps and later at one point even jumped on the sofa. Tom couldn't hold back his happiness as he jumped on the couch, punched the floor and paced around before confessing the reason for his uncontrollable happiness. Oprah was supposed to interview him for his then upcoming film, War of the Worlds, but she was left stunned. At one point she said, what happened to you? To which Tom said, I'm in love. It was during this couch jumping interview that he made his relationship with Katie Holmes official after months and months of speculation. The actor confessed his love for her, but he went overboard with his excitement, pulling off some crazy antics during the interview. His behavior was not only over the top, but some felt it was actually extremely unprofessional and viewers immediately started sympathizing with Oprah because despite being a talented host with years of TV experience, the situation was clearly out of her depth. Had the interview been released today, Tom would have been launched into meme status. So what was the craziest talk show moment? Let me know in the comments below. Starting off at number 10, Logan Paul. Of course, I'm including him on this list, so I figured get the lowest hanging fruit out of the way to start, you know? Like just kind of just say it and then we're all moving on kind of thing, you know? Now some will argue he's a YouTuber, but prior to that he was a Vine star. So he's also got a podcast, which although is on YouTube, is also available on other platforms. And he's boxing Floyd Mayweather. Like, are you kidding me? One of the greatest of all time. YouTubers do not do that. I'm a YouTuber. I make YouTube videos. He's boxing Floyd Mayweather. That's next level. So which country is he banned from? Well, I think we all know. And although he's clearly moved on from his old antics, Unfortunately, what has happened has happened, and I'm not sure the country of Japan will ever be willing to forgive him for his actions. For those of you unaware, Logan had filmed and uploaded footage of a deceased man who had taken his own life while Logan was vlogging in a national park. Aside from this, he was also seen breaking a handful of laws, traffic violations, destruction of property, and interference with business operations, as well as plenty of others. Now, technically, he was never given an official ban from the country. There was a change.org petition for it though, and it's believed the second he steps foot in their country, the authorities would arrest him. That's almost like the next best thing aside from a ban. It's, it's not you can't come in, it's you can come in if you want, but the second you do, we'll arrest you. But I mean, it's your choice. Just come in if you want, we're not, we're not stopping you. Number nine, Snoop Dogg. Sure, Snoop is a rapper, but he's become so much more than that. In pop culture, he's an icon for the devil's lettuce, and he's even an investor in Triller, which is apparently now putting on boxing matches. I don't know, Snoop has been able to stay relevant since he came into the spotlight in the 90s, something a lot of people haven't been able to do. That being said, his brand of always being high somewhat came back to bite him as he is indefinitely banned from the country of Norway, or so we thought. So back in 2012, on his way to perform at a music festival in Norway, Snoop was detained at the airport, searched and caught with a few grams of the good good. This unfortunately left him with a very large fine and an indefinite ban which would then be turned into a two year ban. Although the ban has since been lifted, I don't think Snoop has any interest in going to countries which won't allow him to be, well, you know, him. At number eight, we got Britney Pettibone. For those of you unaware, Britney here is a very vocal political activist, YouTuber, and author whose beliefs to some are deemed very extreme. Back in 2018, she was banned along with two others on this list for trying to enter Britain. Pettibone, who is married to Martin Selner, which we'll cover later on, clearly aligns with a lot of his beliefs, which you guys will see why it's an issue to some. Either way, at the time of their ban, an official who anonymously spoke with routers explained they were banned on the grounds that their, I quote, presence in the UK was not conducive to the public good. A friend of theirs, Lauren Southern, who they were actually planning to meet, was also turned away and taking a Twitter explained she was, I quote, officially banned from UK for racism. Pettibone was also expected to interview Tommy Robinson, who was the former leader of a far right group. On top of this, the three were expected to make a speech at a park in which authorities felt would incite 
I quote, tensions between local communities. But more on those two in just a little bit. At number seven, we got Martha Stewart. In a league of her own, Martha truly did change the game. Although she's known for baking and cooking, it seems Martha got caught up with some legal troubles when she was copying and involved with insider trading. Selling a stock and avoiding a hefty loss the day before the stock would drop about 16%, it would be determined she knew something the public didn't, and after a highly publicized trial, would be sentenced to serve a five-month prison term as well as a five-month house arrest term. This was in 2004, but fast forward to 2008, and the UK is refusing her entry into the country because they felt her previous crime was quite a serious one. More specifically, lying to the government left an uneasy feeling in the authorities' gut, I guess, so they figured why even bother letting her in in the first place. While trying to get her visa to give a speech and do some business, she was refused due to, I quote, serious criminal offenses abroad. Still, she kept it 100 and, you know, she didn't snitch, so that's why her and Snoop Dogg had that baking show together. Is that still a show? I don't think it even is, but you know, at one point they had a show together. Now at number six, Leah C. One of the most recent to be banned from a country, C, who is originally from Russia, was recently deported, and as far as I'm concerned, when you're deported from a country, that usually comes with a ban. At least, in most countries I know. Given how this happened just a week ago, it's unclear where the country of Bali stands with C, who was deported for painting on a surgical mask and pretending it was the real thing. Alongside US-based YouTuber Josh Paler Lin, the two uploaded clips of them walking into a supermarket with Lin wearing a real mask and C with face paint on, if you will. After the clip caught the attention of local authorities, they were detained and after being tested for COVID-19, deported from the country, with a member of the government explaining, I quote, foreigners who don't respect the laws and regulations in Indonesia are facing deportation sanctions. At number five, we got Martin Sellner, the husband of Brittany Pettibone, who came in at number eight. Sellner also got a ban from the UK for his extreme right views and beliefs. Although he was originally denied entry back in 2018 for the same reasons his wife was detained, he most recently received a ban back in June of 2019 to the United States. Authorities started investigating Selner in regards to being linked to the Christchurch shooting. It's believed the shooter actually donated about $1,500 to Selner's organization, which has led to him being banned from the UK indefinitely. As of now, it seems he had absolutely no connection with the incident, and he's denied any involvement. However, authorities still conducted a search on his properties, which would later be deemed illegal by a judge. Now at number four, Paris Hilton. But you guys weren't expecting her on here. Back in 2010, she pled guilty to two misdemeanor charges in Las Vegas for being in possession of some booger sugar. You guys know, like the nose candy, the white powder. We're talking about Coke and not the drink. She was given a year-long probation stemming from her charge, and a month after being given said sentence, she tried to go to Japan, which I'm surprised the United States didn't care and just said, like, leave the country if you want. But it seems Japan did. The country has a strict law in regards to allowing foreigners on probation into their country, and it seems Paris checked off all the boxes. After being detained at the airport for six hours, she was refused entry into the country and sent back to LA. Prior to boarding the plane home, she told reporters, I quote, I'm going back home and I look forward to coming back to Japan in the future. I'm really tired. Which I could totally see that being in an episode of The Simple Life. Some of you guys may remember the show with, you know, Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton. Maybe I'm just old now, I don't know, but I could so see Paris being like, I'm just, I'm really tired. <laughs> At number three, we got Roosh V. Now this guy is known for having some crazy thoughts and beliefs. Much like others on this list, he's got extremely, extremely, extremely right-wing views, and it seems like the UK just ain't about that. Roosh V is the king of it all, accused of being anti-Semitic, a misogynist, and even promoting the idea of being able to force oneself upon another to be legal on private properties, although he claimed the latter was meant to be satirical. So if that gives you guys an indication of, you know, this kind of guy, who he is. There's that. Roosh's views and beliefs have not only gotten him a ban from the UK, but at one point it seems he was almost banned from Canada as well. And I remember John Tory actually tweeting out that he does not want Roosh coming to Toronto when he was gonna do like a tour, I think in Toronto, Montreal. He wasn't allowed to come to the country, so. Coming to number two, we got Lauren Southern. Like Selner and Pettibone, Southern was also denied entry in the UK when she tried meeting them back in 2018. However, she's also been banned from Australia who denied her a visa when she applied for one back in July of 2018. That would be sorted out after she would receive the correct visa and would go on a little tour. Southern, a Canadian, is known for having far-right beliefs, with some comparing her to white Although Australia got sorted, she had to cancel her New Zealand tour. After having issues finding a venue to speak at, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said New Zealand is hostile to the views of the speakers and, I quote, I think you'll see from the reaction they've had from New Zealanders that their views are not those that are shared by this country and I'm quite proud of that. Although she never received a full ban, it was advised that she didn't come to the country. So I think that's kind of like a threatening ban. <laughs> and in at number one, we got Julian Blanc, an American pickup artist, 
Apparently, this man was banned from the UK after he was being accused of promoting unwanted advances, I guess I'll say. It's believed his visa to enter the country was rejected and a petition with over 150,000 signatures asking for him to be barred from the country clearly caught someone's attention. The same month, he was forced to cut short an Australian tour after protests led to his visa being cancelled. Scott Morrison, the Australian immigration minister, clearly understood the public's outrage, explaining, I quote, This guy wasn't putting forward political ideas. He was putting forward that was derogatory to women and those values of our horde in this country. In our number 10 spot, we of course have Hailey Bieber. In 2021, Hailey attended the Met with Justin Bieber and of course there is just no escape when it comes to the Hailey and Selena drama as the TikTok video became viral after many believed it appeared Hailey was crying and Justin was mouthing, don't cry, don't cry. While you can hear the fans outside chanting Selena's name. Not only that, but the 2021 Met also fell on the same day of Hailey and Justin's third wedding anniversary, which makes things even that much more emotional. And in another video showing the same clip, Haley's cousin Ireland actually commented defending the couple as she described them to be one of the happiest and in love couples she's ever been around. What further sparked the rumors were the fact that Haley put on black sunglasses for photos afterwards, potentially covering up her tears. But she made an appearance on the Call Her Daddy podcast where she called all of those rumors not true. Have you seen the video? If you have, do you actually think she cried or was it just a rumor? And for our number 9, we have Alex Rodriguez. This former baseball player attended the 2019 Met where he recalled sitting at a table with Donatella Versace, Henry Golding, Kendall and Kylie Jenner, as well as a few others. And during an interview with Sports Illustrated, he was not afraid to name drop as he spoke on how all Kylie would talk about was her Instagram, lipsticks, and how rich she was, which obviously makes her seem quite out of touch. But that was before Kylie shut down those rumors as she quote tweeted a new source sharing what Alex said and wrote, um, no I didn't, we only talked about Game of Thrones. Alex then responded to Kylie's tweet, retracting his original statement by saying, oh my god, that's right, at Kylie Jenner, it was me talking about you and your makeup line and how much my girls love you. Hashtag got, hashtag respect, hashtag all love. This was also the same year where Forbes listed Kylie as a self-made billionaire, which was controversial for obvious reasons as the term self-made was questioned by many. And for number Eight, we have Sophie Turner. One encounter the Game of Thrones actress discussed was when she ran into Kendall Jenner. Sophie shared how she was a huge fan of the Kardashian Jenner family, so when Kendall invited her out, she just had to say yes, right? Well, actually, no. She declined the offer and admitted it was because she was so stunned by Kendall's beauty that she panicked and said no to her invite. During the 2022 Met Gala, Sophie was approached by Kendall, where she was asked if she wanted to go to her low key after party, and Sophie responded by saying, no, 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 I don't. In fact, Sophie instead had her own after party with just herself and ate a bowl of pasta in bed while thinking she could be somewhere else right now. Honestly, pasta in bed sounds like my kind of after party. For number seven, we have SZA. She was one of the many celebrities who had to make the run out of the Met as soon as possible, but for different reasons compared to Tina Fey and Amy Schumer. She revealed why she left the 2022 Met early during an interview with Finish Line Women's Community Voice series where she explained how she felt overwhelmed as fame and artistic pressures affect her mental wellness. She had so much anxiety that she didn't take the main stairs while leaving and instead took a cab. SZA also opened up about the internet and words people have to say about her, where she discusses how sometimes when people say things that are actually aligned with her insecurities, it's hard to not be bothered by them. And during the 2022 Met, she was wearing a gorgeous magenta gown by Vivian Westwood with long latex black gloves, a black hat, and also matching latex high boots to complete the look. Although many thought she looked stunning, she hated her outfit, but she said it was just a mental thing. And for our number six, we have Gwyneth Paltrow. Back in 2013, she publicly slammed the Met Gala and even said she would never attend ever again. But a few years later, she did indeed attend. So what got her so heated back in 2013? Well, it was because she was internally and externally literally heated. She claimed it was too hot and overcrowded before adding she didn't enjoy it at all. While she made an appearance on the Kyle and Jackie O show, she further added that the whole thing sucked. And if you don't know, Anna Wintour, who picks who gets to attend the exclusive Met, has a track record of never inviting guests back who speak badly about her. Kanye West was also performing for the Met, where according to Gwyneth, he was in a weird mood and all furious as he threw the mic on the floor and it was all drama, but also added she had no idea 
idea why he was mad. And for number five, we have James Charles. Influencers and internet stars began climbing up the social hierarchy, which eventually led some to being invited to the exclusive event such as the Met. One influencer who often attracts drama is of course James Charles as he was actually invited to the 2019 Met. James was known for being the first male cover girl, but with years of fame and success came serious allegations as many believe he should be deplatformed. Not only is he controversial as a whole, but his outfit also sparked opinions as he walked the carpet while wearing Alexander Wang. His top was pretty much see-through as it was made of safety pins paired with baggy velvet looking pants and boots. This was also the first year the Met Gala had overflowing opinions on if influencers even deserve being at the Met. Fast forward to 2023, Emma Chamberlain was the only internet celebrity that was invited to this fashion event. And days after James was at the Met, the whole YouTube drama with Jeffree Star and Toddy Westbrook occurred. And for our number 4, we have Demi Lovato. She attended the Met in 2016 and was never seen there ever again. Her experience was so bad that she almost broke her 5 years of sobriety due to how uncomfortable the whole event made her feel. She actually thanks an anonymous celebrity for an awful experience she had. Although she never pointed the fingers directly at anyone, many believe this mystery celebrity was Nicki Minaj due to the Instagram post the two shared and the caption along with them. Demi referred to the celebrity as the B word and in general was just miserable to be around because of how cliquey things were. This experience drove Demi to leave the Met with millions of dollars worth of diamond jewelry still on although she did change her clothes. Then she went straight from the Met to an AA meeting. There is where she said she related more to those experiencing homelessness in the meeting who have dealt with similar struggles as Demi herself than those who were attending the Met. She's clearly not the only person who has had an awful experience at this supposed to be extravagant and exclusive fashion event of the year. And for number 3 we have Jay Z and Solange. In 2014, Jay Z and Beyonce's sister Solange made headlines after footage captured her attacking Jay Z. This occurred at the Standard Hotel elevator during an after party for the Met. And the video was eventually leaked to the public for them to see. So why did she even attack him? Well this was following the release of Beyonce's Lemonade album which discusses infidelity as Jay Z has cheated on Beyonce herself. And because this album was released the same year as this physical altercation, many have pointed the finger at Solange being the sister she is felt like she had to have her sisters back or physically attack. Beyonce herself talked about this elevator incident or should I say sang about it in her song Flawless with one line reading, of course sometimes stuff goes down when there's a billion dollars on an elevator. I've never been on an elevator with a billion dollars but if you've been with me on an elevator you can brag about being with $20,000 in student debt. For number 2 we have Smoke Break. During the 2017 Met, photos were shared of literally a bunch of celebrities such as Bella Hadid, Dakota Johnson, Marc Jacobs, Paris Jackson, and Rami Malek just to name a few as they were caught on cameras using the indoor bathrooms for a quick fix. Not an outfit or makeup fix but a smoke break as many had cigarettes or electric ones in hand. This not only was against the museum's rules but also the donors for this event were angered. One of which spoke to page 6 at the time to express their thoughts as they believed it was disrespectful to the art collection which needed to be kept 100% smoke free before adding they would like to see all those people fined by the city. And for our number 1 spot of course we have Kim Kardashian. In 2022 Kim made headlines and not because she attended the Met with comedian Pete Davidson but because of what she was wearing. I'm assuming you know who Marilyn Monroe is? Well in her iconic happy birthday Mr. President performance she was wearing a sheer flesh colored dress that was covered in 2,500 rhinestones. And after her passing the dress was sold to the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum for 4.8 million dollars. While Kim actually wore this dress at the Met before changing into a replica after after taking pictures on the infamous Met staircase. And obviously Kim is known for her body which may not have the same measurements to Marilyn's. Well it was revealed Kim had to lose 16 pounds in 2 weeks to even squeeze into the dress and claimed she didn't do anything unhealthy to achieve this which many believe is not completely the truth. One celebrity who spoke publicly against Kim was Lily Reinhardt who thought Kim openly admitting to this is extremely harmful especially towards those younger fans who look up to her. Especially since the Kardashian and Jenners have been criticized over the years for setting unrealistic body standards and not being transparent about procedures they 
they have gone under. Which incident that happened at the Met Gala was most shocking to you? Honestly, I'm still kind of shocked that Kim Kardashian wore Marilyn Monroe's dress despite everything. Number 10, oh James Corden. Last October, the owner of a high-end New York City restaurant called Balthazar made a viral Instagram post blasting James for his horrible behavior towards staff. He called him the worst customer to his service since the restaurant opened 25 years ago. He claimed that James demanded two free rounds of drinks for him and his friends after he presented a hair that was supposedly found on his food. On another occasion, he apparently flipped out when an egg yolk omelet that his wife had ordered was found to have a little bit of egg white in it. When this came out about him, the late night host spoke to the London Times and tried to defend himself. He said, I never screamed at anyone, I didn't shout, I didn't call anyone a name or swear or use derogatory language. How is it remotely a thing? And now it's fact and that's that. When that person who posted the story wasn't even there, that's just so odd. In response, the restaurant manager once again and called him out on Instagram and wrote, Corden flip-flopped and told a massive lie again. The actor will say anything to save his bacon. In the scheme of things, my opinion means nothing, but after Friday's interview and a second look at his fraudulent confessional, I've given up on James Corden for good. Number nine, Chris Jenner. Last September, Chris went on the late show with James Corden, where she was strapped to a lie detector and she was interviewed about the infamous tape that was released in 2007 of Kim Kardashian and Ray J. So Chris denied the years-long speculation that she was involved in the tape's production. But once the results came back, it seemed as though she was telling the truth. In response to the interview, Ray J then appeared on Instagram Live with a full presentation to prove that actually she was lying. He showed screenshots of text messages that Kanye West had sent him asking for the original tapes because he wanted to give them back to Kim. In the messages, Kanye asks if there's a time that the two of them can talk or meet up to discuss the matter further. And in response, Ray J said, I've got two kids and a tech company. Why would I involve myself in this? I'm so past this, bro. I'm assuming you know the full story from 05, right? How it happened, who brokered the deal, who put it all together? This is when Ray J made the most shocking revelation ever. He said, Chris Jenner is the one who made us shoot the second tape in Santa Barbara. He then claimed that Chris orchestrated the filming of the last tape and even watched them to decide which one was best. Number eight, Shay Michelle. In 2018, the actress posted a sponsored video on Snapchat to promote a makeup remover. In the clip, she said, I have obviously tried my fair share of makeup removers, but these are by far my favorite. She then pours a liquid onto a cotton round and pretends to remove waterproof eye makeup by wiping the pad across her eyes. But while she proudly shows off the smudged cotton round, you can see that her eyeshadow and mascara remain perfectly intact. The ad was swiftly and mercilessly mocked on social media, and it made her seem a lot less credible in the beauty community. Fans pointed out that she didn't even rub her eye or touch her skin at all. Not only that, but it was a little suspicious that she had a Snapchat filter on when she was doing a promotional video involving makeup. It just made the whole thing seem so much less honest, as though she was intentionally trying to trick viewers. The reactions to the video ranged from unimpressed to straight up disappointment, and it even brought about a few parodies too. What's really crazy is that this wasn't even the first time that Shay was caught lying on social media. That same year, she was accused of taking a handful of photos from other blogs and trying to pass them off as her own travel pictures on Instagram. She even forgot to take out a computer cursor in the bottom left corner when she posted it. So yeah, it was pretty bad. Number seven, Terrence Howard. The actor is known for his captivating intensity on screen and it certainly won him over with fans when he starred as Lucius on Empire. But sometimes art imitates life and Howard's domineering character was very much a reflection of the actor behind him. His violent tendencies were pretty well hidden from the public eye until about 2009 when the smoking gun reported that about 10 years prior, he was arrested for viciously beating up his estranged wife, Lori McComas. Lori dialed 911 after Howard threatened her over the phone, saying that he was going to come over and hurt her. But it was all too late because before the police arrived, he had already broken down the front door of the house and attacked her, punching her in the face multiple times. The actor was charged and pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct, but the incident wasn't a one-off. In the year 2000, he reportedly attacked a flight attendant for asking him to return to his seat because the seatbelt sign was on. And in 2005, he attacked a couple at a diner because they were seated before him. In the years following, he allegedly harmed multiple intimate partners in some of the worst ways possible. But it was a long time before any of those accidents actually got in the way of his career. Number six, Leah Michelle. The actress and singer was the face of the hit TV musical Glee, playing the character that we all love to hate, Rachel Berry. Her on-screen persona was harsh to say in the least, and she could be extremely cruel when it came to getting what she wanted. But her overly ambitious character was actually a portrayal of how Leah was in real life, although she did an excellent job of keeping that hidden. It was in June of 2020 after she tweeted her support for 
Black Lives Matter that she started getting exposed for her true nature. Her former Glee co-star Samantha Ware called her out for hypocrisy, claiming that Liam made her time on set a living hell and threatened to defecate in her wig. Heather Morris also came out with her own allegations, quote, was she unpleasant to work with? Very much so. For Leah to treat others with the disrespect that she did for as long as she did, I believe that she should be called out. Actor Keith Powell tweeted, quote, Leah Michelle is a terrible human and has said terrible things to many types of people, including racist microaggressions. In light of all the accusations, the actress was then dropped from her partnership with the company HelloFresh and she eventually deactivated her Twitter account. Number five, Ellen DeGeneres. The stand-up comedian and veteran talk show host Ellen was nicknamed the queen of nice at one point, with many people loving her signature catchphrase, be kind to one another. They also liked her on-screen giveaways and her vocal support of LGBTQ plus rights. But behind the curtain, Ellen was a different person entirely, and that all got revealed in March of 2020 when podcaster Kevin T. Porter asked people to post stories about her mean-spirited behavior, which completely opened the floodgates. He was then slammed by past and present employees with accusations of enabling a toxic culture, and Ellen found herself engulfed in accusations of bullying behavior by not only staffers, but past guests and even fellow celebrities, with some insisting that her mean nature is common knowledge among the Hollywood elite. Ellen addressed the infamous toxic workplace scandal that saw three of her most senior staffers axed from the show. One TV writer claimed that Ellen required anyone who talks to her at work to chew gum from a bowl outside her office first, and that she would often send staff home to shower if she thought that they would smell. Because of the overwhelming negative publicity that she received as a result of the scandal, the comic had had to wrap up her hit talk show after 19 seasons on air. Number 4, Army Hammer. Among the new stars who have recently graced the big screen of cinema, Army really stood out. He had a wholesome image with an all-American crew cut, and he absolutely killed it in his role as the Winklevoss twins in The Social Network. But it was his part in Call Me By Your Name that really made him a global star. Nothing is ever as it seems though, and while he was very good at disguising his dark side, it eventually came out. In January, a series of text messages were leaked of him detailing his sickening fantasies. The actor was also accused of attacking multiple women, and he was named a suspect in an LAPD case. His former intimate partner eventually came forward, claiming that he viciously attacked her over a period of four hours, not long after his wife Elizabeth Chambers left him and the facade of their perfect marriage fell apart. Eventually, she even called him a monster. The actor was then dropped out of two high-profile projects and is now residing in a resort in the Cayman Islands. Number three, Jamie Lynn Spears. Someone that has lost all support from what little fan base she had to begin with is Jamie Lynn Spears. She's known pretty much as a younger sibling of Britney Spears, but she didn't exactly hide long in her sister's shadow before entering the limelight. Although she's made a few appearances in film and television as a child, she didn't receive star status until landing the lead role as Zoe Brooks on the Nickelodeon show Zoe 101. After three years on the show, the then 16-year-old announced that she was pregnant, effectively ending her role and putting her career on hiatus. But people disliked her because of the horrific way that she has treated her sister over the years. In fact, fans of Britney have heavily criticized Jamie Lynn for an apparent lack of support during her sister's 14-year-long conservatorship. In fact, the former actress has been accused of trying to steal Britney's fortune, fighting against the movement to free her from her conservatorship, and writing tell-all books to try and profit off of her sister's name while trying to make her look bad. With Britney finally now able to speak up for herself and even releasing her own memoir, it no doubt resulted in even more exposure of Jamie Lynn's horrific behavior. Number two, Felicity Huffman. The actress was involved in the college admissions scandal along with her husband, William H. Macy. Felicity made a so-called charitable contribution of $15,000 to participate in the college entrance exam, which was really a cheating scheme on behalf of her eldest daughter, Sophia Grace Bain. The Desperate Housewives actress and her husband then made arrangements to do the same for their younger daughter, but later decided against it. After she pleaded guilty to fraud charges, she was then sentenced to 14 days in prison, and then had to publicly apologize for her role in the scandal, admitting that she paid to improve her daughter's SAT scores. She said, I want to apologize to the students who work very hard every day to get into college, and to their parents who make tremendous sacrifices to support their children and do so honestly. Felicity and Lori were among dozens of wealthy parents who were charged with participating in schemes to bribe coaches and university insiders or to cheat on entrance exams. The scandal, which drew in Hollywood stars, hedge fund millionaires, and athletic coaches, exemplify the advantages afforded to wealthy applicants and fueled debates about fairness and equity in admissions. And number one, Isaiah Washington. The actor was among the original cast members of Grey's Anatomy and he played Preston Burr. But in 2007, after the show's three successful seasons, it came out that he called his co-star T.R. Knight a homophobic 
slur that starts with the letter F. And this happened during an argument on set with actor Patrick Dempsey. The fallout was so bad for Isaiah that ABC decided not to renew his contract after the incident. He issued an apology at the time and denied using the word at the 2007 Golden Globes. But he later admitted to it, but he later admitted to it during an interview on Larry King Live, where he said that he used a number of obscenities that he wasn't proud of. He then tried to backpedal and claim that he did not mean to use the slur in a homophobic way. Instead, he used the word to describe someone who was being weak. But the incident greatly affected TR Knight, who identified as gay. In fact, he had to reach out to his family for support after the altercation hit the headlines because it really put a spotlight on his sexual orientation. In the end, Isaiah admitted that no one wanted to hire him after the scandal, and he recently revealed that he's retired from acting because he said the haters won. And for number nine, we have Demi Lovato. Back in 2016, Demi attended the Met for the first time and last time as she recalls a horrible experience, and many believe it's because of Nicki Minaj. It all started when Nicki and Demi were dressed by Jeremy Scott, and Nicki decided to post a picture on her Instagram, but only tagged the designer Scott. Demi took a notice to this and commented a laughing emoji, a peace sign, and a thumbs up before sharing that exact same photo, but captioned it with, this picture pretty much summed up my first and probably last met. Hashtag cool, hashtag so effing awkward, hashtag not for me. And when she spoke to Billboard about her experience, she described it as cliquey and so uncomfortable that she wanted to drink even after being sober for years. After the Met, she went to an AA meeting where she actually said she related to those experiencing homelessness at the meeting that struggled the same struggles she did compared to the people at the Met, who she called fake. She hasn't attended since and stayed true to her word, and by the sounds of it, would rather do anything but attend again. In her eighth spot, we have Tim Gunn. You would assume the Project Runway host would be invited to the iconic fashion event, right? Well, Tim made a few appearances to the Met and actually enjoyed attending the gala unlike many others. The reason why he never received an invitation back was because he once made a comment about Anna Wintour. When he was asked what the most unforgettable thing he saw in fashion was, he responded by saying he once saw Wintour have to be carried down two flights of stairs by her security. And because of this one comment, he's actually never been invited since and has begun dismissing Wintour's personal persona and even called her a history revisionist. To be honest, I don't think what he said is nearly as bad for Anna's reputation than some others on this list, but I guess she really disliked his comment. And for number seven, we have Bathroom Break. Before you wonder what celebrity is named Bathroom Break, well basically there was an incident that occurred at the Met back in 2017 that involved a ton of celebrities like Bella Hadid, Dakota Johnson, and Marc Jacobs were just a few that were served a legal letter condemning their behavior. There were photos circulating that showed those celebrities and more on the bathroom floor all taking a smoke break. And looking at these photos gave me flashbacks to my high school bathroom. Not only were there celebrities who walked the red carpet there, but also some designers themselves were even photographed taking a smoke break with the others. The New York City Health Commissioner was outraged and even shared how this was such a bad influence as young people see these stars ignoring the law and undermining the progress that has been made to denormalize smoking and raise awareness when it comes to health risks. Anna Wintour also apparently received complaints from the museum's biggest donor for the behavior of some stars. And many have addressed how there are also signs saying that no smoke was allowed indoors. For our number six, we have the Kardashians and Jenners. Rumors began circulating this year that the Kar Jenner family may not receive an invite to the Met, even though in the past, Kim, Kylie, Kendall, Courtney, Chloe, and even Chris have been on the red carpet. But one of the most controversial outfit choices was from Kim, where she showed up to the Met in the iconic Happy Birthday Mr. President dress Marilyn Monroe wore. And according to sources, Marilyn not only never wanted anyone else to wear it, but Kim also permanently damaged this historical dress. She also received how she had to lose 16 pounds within 3 weeks to even be able to attempt squishing into it. Previously, this dress was on display at the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, which they previously bought from an auction for $4.8 million. Page 6 reported that they would not be invited to the Met for future events because Anna Wintour is cracking down on who actually makes the cut. One source spoke out saying no Kardashian will be invited. However, another source said that is untrue, so I guess only time will tell. In our fifth spot, we have Lily Reinhardt. This actress best known for her role on Riverdale had a fun time at the 2022 Met, but she believes that may have been the last time she'll ever be invited. However, she had made a few comments about Kim Kardashian possibly
publicly on her Instagram, which leads her to believe that she will not be wanted back. If you're wondering what she said, she basically called out Kim for losing 16 pounds in three weeks because of the bad example she leads for millions of young people that look up to her. And Lily herself has talked about her body image and how she has struggled in the past. So for Kim to publicly be sharing this, acting like it's easy and healthy, rubbed Lily the wrong way. And I'm sure it has for many others as well. Lily has made several appearances in the past and I guess with time we'll see if she really is banned like many and herself believe. And for number 4 we have Rachel Zoe. This fashion designer who rose to fame by being a celebrity stylist was once banned from the Met because of what she said about Anna Wintour, which sounds similar to to Tim's villain origin story. Back in 2007, Rachel was doing an interview and she made some remarks which I guess angered Wintour and prevented her from attending future Mets. So what did she say? Well, Rachel claimed she was more influential than the Met Gala inviter herself, Anna Wintour. But unlike Tim, she was eventually invited back in 2012. For our number 3, we have Jamila Jamil. Similarly to a lot on this list, she doesn't believe she will be invited back to the Met after vocalizing her opinions on past themes. One theme that sparked controversy was a 2023 theme of Karl Lagerfeld and it was so controversial because this fashion designer, although worked with some of the top fashion brands such as Chanel and Chloe, has a past of being fat phobic, misogynistic, and intolerant. Some celebrity looks included Doja Cat and Jared Leto dressing up as Karl's cat, which is weirdly how I remember this met. And obviously with Karl having those three worst qualities anyone can have, it only made sense for a ton of people to find the theme controversial. Although this is just a speculation that she'll never receive an invite back, I guess with the past and pattern of Wintour not inviting people because of what they have said about the fashion event, it wouldn't be shocking. And for number 2 we have Zayn Malik, this singer that launched his career by auditioning on The X Factor where Simon Cowell formed the band One Direction, has attended the Met Gala a singular one time back in 2016 where he walked the red carpet with his then girlfriend and model Gigi Hadid. However, he has discussed his experience at the Met and how he isn't a fan of the whole self indulgent idea. He shared how he would rather be sitting at home doing something productive rather than dressing up in expensive clothing and being photographed on the red carpet because it simply isn't him. He has never attended another Met, whether that was because he didn't get an invite or prefer not to go, or because Wintour didn't like how he described his experience, I guess we'll never know. And in our number one spot, we have Tina Fey. She attended the Met once back in 2010 and during an interview with David Letterman in 2015, she called the whole thing a jerk parade. She also added if you have millions of arms and all the people in the world you would punch, they're all there. She did say one positive thing which was it was a beautiful space, but then added to that statement by saying every jerk from every walk of life is there wearing something stupid. She also shared how she dragged her husband along with her and she is still in trouble for doing so. Ever since then she hasn't attended another Met and chances are won't be invited back. If you were invited to the Met, would you attend? I mean it sounded all fun and fancy until I did research on past celebrity experiences and I think it sounds similar to attending high school. For number 10, we have the annoying orange. I'm sorry, I meant to say Donald Trump. I'll blame that on autocorrect. Trump, before he was president, has actually made several appearances at the Met alongside Melania and before Melania, he attended the event with his first wife Ivana in 1985. He was pictured wearing the same black suit each time he attended the Met, but Melania did change outfits each year. But on an episode of The Late Late Show starring James Corden, Anna Wintour appeared for their Spill Your Gut or Fill Your Gut segment where she was asked to reveal one person she would cut from the guest list. And the other option was to eat pickled pig's feet. So she decided to answer. When James asked, who she would never invite back to the Met without missing a single beat, she answered with Donald Trump. Although she never gave a reason why, the public can probably speculate one or two hundred different reasons, but for now, it's up for speculation. And for number 9, we have Lily Reinhardt. This actress is best known for her role as Betty in the show Riverdale, and she believes she won't be invited to the Met Gala because of some public statements she's made in the past. In an interview with W Magazine, she admitted she doesn't think she'll be invited back. Even though she's attended three times in the past, although she didn't directly state why or what she was talking about, she did hint it by saying, I said a certain something about a certain person in a certain dress, which only made sense to be about Kim Kardashian after she wore the famous Marilyn Monroe dress, which caused huge controversy. It was also revealed Kim had to lose 16 pounds in three weeks in order to fit into the dress, which Lily also said that she will always want to stand for something and whatever she comments on, 
one, it has to be a true representation of how she feels, regardless if she has 100 followers or 100 million. She wrote on her Instagram story at the time to call it so wrong and effed up on hundreds of different levels, before stating, to openly admit to starving yourself for the sake of the Met Gala when you know very well that millions of young men and women are looking up to you and listening to your every word. The ignorance is otherworldly and disgusting. In the past, Lily has also discussed about having severe body image struggles. Do you think she'll be invited back for next year? And in our eighth spot, we have Zayn Malik. He last attended the Met in 2016 and was pictured with his then girlfriend and supermodel Gigi Hadid, who he shares a daughter with. However, he told GQ he actually did not enjoy the experience and admitted it wasn't anything he knew about previously, but his former stylist told him it would be a really good move for him to attend. Zayn discussed how it's not something he would go to because he would rather be sitting at home doing something productive compared to dressing up in expensive clothing while being photographed on the red carpet. He stated, To do the self-indulgent look at me, I'm amazing thing on the red carpet, it's not me. And for number seven, we have Amy Schumer. In 2017, she attended the Met, but after the event, publicly bashed it and even said she would never return. She told Howard Stern, It's people doing an impression of having a conversation. I don't like the farce. We're dressed up like a bunch of effing a-holes. Amy also added that she has no interest in fashion and doesn't care. She even left earlier than she would have been allowed and even said the event felt like a punishment. But on the flip side, she met Beyonce and the singer asked Schumer if this was her first Met Gala, which Amy responded with, it's my last. But she did attend once again in 2022, where she was seen wearing an all black outfit and sunglasses. Glasses. And when she was asked about the theme called Gilded Glamour, she said it reminded her of an adult toy. And in our number six spot, we have Lena Dunham. Lena actually completely agreed with Amy by saying she was right behind her. She said so herself that she attempted to rub her behind on Michael B. Jordan for 20 minutes, then left right after Amy. The reason why Lena had a poor experience at the Met was because she was sitting next to Odell Beckham Jr. And according to her, he determined she was not the shape of a woman by his standards. He said, that's a marshmallow, that's a child, that's a dog. Lena added, it wasn't mean, he just seemed confused. But she added the vibe was very, very odd as they were forced to be together while he was scrolling through Instagram instead of looking at a woman in a bow tie. Dunham also said that this should be called the Metropolitan Museum of Getting Rejected by Athletes. And for our fifth spot, we have influencers. Yes, influencers in general have once made an appearance to the Met Gala before never returning like ever again. In 2019, James Charles was actually invited and faced criticism for his outfit and Instagram caption with his Met photos calling his invite a step forward for influencer representation. In 2022, Dixie D'Amelio, Addison Rae, and Avani Gregg were a few TikTokers that appeared for this exclusive fashion party. And the year before that, Nikki Tutorials, Jackie Ina, and Eugene Lee Yang from the Try Guys were also spotted. And this year for the 2023 Met, Emma Chamberlain was the only internet star to attend. Many believe this is because many have criticized the Met for inviting internet stars as they were not considered traditional celebrities. In 2019, a tweet with over 140,000 likes read, Met Gala is actually losing its exclusivity. I don't know how they can have these boring YouTubers and D-list celebrities walking around like it's a Kid Choice Awards. Not only is it internet stars that have been a controversial invite, but also the Kardashian family as many call them the OG influencer. I want to know if you believe influencers should be invited to the met or do you think it does indeed lack exclusivity? And for our fourth spot, we have Demi Lovato. In 2016, she attended the Met where she represented designer Jeremy Scott alongside Nicki Minaj. However, many thought Nicki was throwing shade towards Demi when she only tagged herself and Scott in a photo, so Demi posted her own photo that showed Nicki giving her the side eye. Whether it was a coincidence or not, the caption read, this picture pretty much summed up my first and probably last Met. Hashtag cool, hashtag so effing awkward, hashtag not for me. And two years later, while being interviewed by Billboard magazine, she said the whole event was so uncomfortable that it almost drove her to drink. And during this time, she was actually sober for over five years, so for the Met to be that uncomfortable says a lot. Demi described the experience as terrible and added that one celebrity was a complete 
B word to her and was miserable to be around. She also said it was very cliquey, which made her uncomfortable, and she attended an AA meeting afterwards where she changed her clothes but still had millions of dollars worth of diamonds on. But she added she related more to some of the people that were experiencing homelessness at the meeting who struggled with the same struggles she did than people at the Met, calling them fake and sucking the fashion industry's you know what. And for number three, we have Gwyneth Paltrow. This actress first attended the Met in 1995, and in 2013, just days after the event, she said she would never go again, because in her words, it was so unfun, and apparently it was boiling and too crowded, which made her not enjoy the event at all. But it appeared she attempted to do some damage control through a post on her lifestyle site called Goop, where she described the Met as the year's most elaborate display of incredible fashion, and eventually attended the Met once again in 2017 and in 2019, even after those remarks she made years ago. And for our number two, we have Tina Fey. She told David Letterman back in 2015 that she had gone once and called it a jerk parade. And of course, she said she would never go again, but described it as a beautiful space where every jerk from the walk of life is there wearing a stupid thing. She also mentioned how she dragged her husband to attend with her, which she is still in trouble for to this day. She also apparently hated it so much, she suggested drinking contact lens solution to avoid attending, and added how if you have a million arms and all the people you would punch in the whole world, they're all there. Unlike other celebrities on this list, she actually hasn't attended since 2010, so it seems like she's stuck to her words so far. And in our number one spot, we have Tim Gunn. He actually apparently enjoyed attending the Met up until 2006, and that's when he was banned, as he revealed in 2016. Apparently the reason why he has never been invited since was due to the comments he made about Anna Wintour, which I'm assuming she wasn't the biggest fan of. When he was asked what was the most unforgettable thing he saw in fashion, he answered by saying it was watching Anna Wintour being carried down five flights of stairs by two bodyguards from a fashion show. And according to him, they've had an open war since, which he shared with Page Six. Vogue also asked him to retract his statement, which he refused to do, and if you don't know, Anna has been working for Vogue as their editor-in-chief since 1988. As exclusive as this fashion event appears, Honestly, hearing these celebrities talk about it really makes me question if I would even enjoy attending. But the chances of me being invited are equal to the world ending back in 2012, which is absolutely zero. Is there anyone you believe should never be invited back? I mean, Kim Kardashian has been a huge topic of this ever since the Marilyn Monroe dress incident. At number 10, we have Doja Cat. While her music is still as good as ever, Doja Cat is constantly finding herself in hot water these days. After losing nearly 1 million followers for hating on her own fans, she seems to have alienated her remaining fan base by wearing a t-shirt featuring an extremely controversial person. The picture has now been deleted off of Instagram, but not before it was seen by millions. In the photo, Dosha is posing in her car while she wears a t-shirt that shows controversial comedian Sam Hyde holding a firearm. After fans called her out on Instagram, she then removed the images but left a blurry photo of herself in the same outfit up on her Instagram story. She then uploaded a cropped version of one of the pictures, but fans made sure she knew that they hadn't forgotten about the controversy. And not too long ago, she called out some of her stands for creating their own unofficial nickname for her loyal fan base because she didn't sign off on it and she clearly hated the name. She went on a bit of a Twitter rant and wrote, My fans don't get to name themselves. If you call yourself a kitten or effing kittens, that means you need to get off your phone and get a job and help your parents with the house. Number nine, Justin Timberlake. As we know, Britney Spears recently released a bombshell memoir coming through with some major allegations against Justin Timberlake, which it's safe to to say earned him a ton of backlash on social media. Now he's been cancelled like never before. In the most talked about part of their memoir, Britney described her relationship with Justin. She talked about their first kiss as a Janet Jackson song was playing in the background and the very difficult decision she had to make in the year 2000 after she learned that she was pregnant with his baby. She said, it was a surprise, but for me it wasn't a tragedy. I love Justin so much. I always expected us to have a family together one day. This would just be much earlier than I'd anticipated. But she said that Justin definitely wasn't happy about the pregnancy. He said he wasn't ready to have a baby and that they were way too young. We now understand why sources said that Justin was concerned about Britney's memoir. She also revealed that if the decision had been left up to her and her 
alone, she never would have gone through with it. But she only did so because Justin was so sure that he didn't want to be a father. Looking back at that experience, Brittany said, to this day, it's one of the most agonizing things I have ever experienced in my life. Number eight, Jada Pinkett Smith. The actress came through with her own bombshell memoir this year called Worthy. And like most of these Hollywood books, it generated a lot of controversy. Unfortunately for Jada, the general consensus was that people did not want to hear what she had to say. Not only that, but some people call her out for straight up telling blatant lies. Like when she opened up about her relationship with the late rapper Tupac Shakur and claimed that he proposed to her in prison during his stay at Rikers Island. A TikTok user challenged Jada's account with a meticulous timeline that cast doubt on her story, questioning the authenticity of her narrative. Apparently during the time Jada claims Tupac proposed to her, he was already engaged to Keisha Morris. So when you place her story against the historical timeline, things start to look a little fishy. So the situation raises the question of when the alleged visit to Rikers Island and the marriage proposal transpired. At the time, Jada was transitioning into a relationship with Will Smith, who had recently separated from his wife. So the timeline just doesn't make a lot of sense. You can see why people have been poking holes in Jada's story. Number seven, Amber Heard. Although the actress is slowly but surely making her return to Hollywood, it's extremely doubtful that she would receive an invitation to somewhere like the Met Gala. Though the past year has been pretty chaotic for her, she stepped back into the spotlight and is a star of a new film called In the Fire. The movie premiered at the 69th Taramina Film Festival in Sicily and Amber was there for the screening, with red lipstick and her signature blonde hair in old Hollywood glam. Despite all of this though, she has not been able to stay away from controversy. According to new legal documents just released from the defamation trial last year, she made some startling allegations in therapy sessions back in 2021, when she and Jason Momoa were working together on Aquaman. During one particular session in December that year, she said she felt that Jason was trying to play mind games with her by intentionally copying Johnny Depp's fashion sense, right down to the rings on his fingers. She also claimed that he was intoxicated on set and that he was trying to get her fired, which is insanely hard to believe when you think about the fact that he was the one who advocated for her to stay in the movie. So she accused Jason of purposely dressing like her ex in order to mess with her, which as you could imagine, only created even more drama. Number six, Johnny Depp. Although the actor is in a significantly better place than his ex, there's no doubt that inviting him to the Met Gala next year would bring a lot of controversy to the event, which Anna Wintour would most likely want to avoid. As we've seen at the Cannes Film Festival, Johnny Depp has made an effort to move on from last year's chaos. He's been taking up new film projects and made it crystal clear that he's getting back in the game. But the festival's decision to include both of the films ignited a firestorm online. Amber's supporters, which have been growing in number over the years, accused the festival of endorsing an alleged liar and manipulator. They emphasize the need to stand with survivors and get Hollywood to try and take a unified stance against DV. Then Johnny Depp supporters argue that the festival was choosing sides against him by featuring her movie, given the allegations and counter allegations that went on between them. Either way, it's no wonder that they're both working so hard to clear their name. Not everyone is equipped to survive the intense controversy that these two have had in the past couple of years. The former couple have been two of the most controversial names in Hollywood ever since they filed for divorce. Number five, Jonah Hill. Earlier this year, the actor and comedian was exposed online by his ex girlfriend who claimed that he was controlling and misogynistic. These events collectively sparked outrage, mostly from other women who said that they've had similar experiences in relationships. It started on July 7th when Sarah Brady shared a series of Instagram stories detailing Jonah's behavior while they were together. She posted DMs and text messages that she claims were sent to her while they were dating. She wrote, sharing this publicly now because keeping it to myself was causing more damage to my mental health than sharing it could ever do. This is a warning to all girls. If your partner is talking to you like this, make an exit plan. Call me if you need an ear. So what was in these messages? Well, one of them appeared to show him chastising her for posting photos of herself surfing in a bikini. And when she deleted some of the photos, Jonas allegedly tells her that it's a good start, but that she still doesn't seem to get it. He explains what kind of behavior that he feels is crossing his boundaries. And this includes her surfing with other men, modeling, posing pictures of herself in a bathing suit, and having friendships with women who are in, quote, unstable places, whatever that means. Number four, Justin Roiland. The creator and voice actor of Rick and Morty was recently fired from his own show after a series of disturbing allegations surfaced about him. Justin was also charged with felony DV against a former girlfriend and was awaiting trial for an incident that occurred in January of 2020, which resulted in him being charged with one felony count of battery with corporal injury and one felony count of false imprisonment by menace, violence, fraud, and deceit. And if he was found guilty at the time, he could have faced up to 
seven years in prison. At this point, Adult Swim then decided to cut ties with him, and they released a statement confirming that the beloved animated series would continue on without him. The news, of course, came as a massive shock to Rick and Morty fans because Justin is the voice of the two lead characters in the show, as well as various other ones. So his attorney then released a statement saying, To be clear, not only is Justin innocent, but we also have every expectation that this matter is on course to be dismissed once the district attorney's office has completed its methodical review of the evidence. But with everything else that came out about him recently, it looks like his career might have gone out the window permanently. Number 3. Lori Loughlin The star of Full House seems to have been well and truly blacklisted from Hollywood. In 2019, she became embroiled in the nationwide college admissions scandal along with several college coaches and officials. What actually caused it to make headlines was the involvement of famous actors. Lori and her husband Massimo Giuliani were said to have bribed college officials with $500,000 in exchange for having their two daughters appear to be on the USC crew team in order to get into the Ivy League school, despite the fact that their daughters Bella and Olivia Jade were completely unfamiliar with the sport. The couple pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit wire and mail fraud, then were hit with additional money laundering and bribery charges. Lori was sentenced to two months in prison and is expected to serve her full sentence because there is no time off for good behaviour for less than a year in the federal system. Aside from the two month prison stint, she must undergo two years of supervised release, conduct 100 hours of community service and pay a fine of $150,000. She released a statement at the time admitting to the crime and said, I thought I was acting out of love for my children, but in reality it only undermined and diminished my daughter's abilities and accomplishments. Number 2 Jussie Smollett The Empire star became the centre of controversy when it was revealed that he lied about being the target of a hate crime. In 2019 he claimed that he was brutally attacked by two men wearing ski masks in Chicago at around 2am. Jesse then went on Good Morning America to tell his story and said that he was forever changed by the event. But there was already a scepticism swirling on social media. He explained that he did not hand over his cell phone to police because he had private pictures and videos and numbers on there and said the attack felt like minutes but it was probably 30 seconds. Little to more than two weeks after the alleged incident, Jesse was arrested and charged with filing a false police report. It was eventually revealed that he paid two brothers $3,500 to stage the attack in an effort to raise his show business profile. The actor was found guilty by a jury of five of the six felony disorderly conduct counts that he faced, one for each time he was accused of lying to police. As a result, he was sentenced to 30 months probation and 150 days in jail. Although this event has greatly impacted his credibility and reputation in Hollywood, he has recently stepped back into directing and seems to be trying to get back into the industry. And coming in at number one, Shia LaBeouf. The 37 year old actor is known for his bad behaviour and questionable choices, which gave him a reputation for being one of the most obnoxious celebrities that Hollywood has ever produced. When he tried his hand at directing, he made a short film called Howard Cantor, which was shown at Cannes in May of 2012. It received significant acclaim and praise from critics everywhere, but no one realised that the script was stolen. It turns out that Shia copied word for word from a book by Daniel Klaus and did not even give him credit. To make matters worse, when he was confronted about it, he apologised and then later revealed to have plagiarised all of his apologies from other people. Add this disaster to the allegations against him made by FKA Twigs in 2021 and you can see why he is really problematic. The singer filed a bombshell lawsuit alleging that he was physically and verbally violent towards her during their relationship. She also made the claim that he would attack stray dogs in order to get into character for his film The Tax Collector. She even described a time when they were both in the car speeding towards LA and Shia was driving recklessly. He allegedly removed his seatbelt threatening to crash the car unless she professed her love for him. So there's really no reason that he should be getting hired for any more projects and it's unsurprising that he is not invited to next year's Met Gala. Number 10 Will Smith It would come as no surprise if the actor was to be banned from next year's Met Gala, considering his contentious history at last year's Oscars, where he walked up to Chris Rock and slapped him on the face all because he made a joke about his wife Jada Pinkett Smith. The consequences of this moment are still occurring today. Will has apologised for his actions several times, however he was called out again, this time by Chris Rock during his Netflix special Selective Outrage. For his part, Chris finally unleashed his opinion on the incident and he clearly does not accept Will's apology nor does he think that he had any valid reason to walk up on stage and slap him across the face. Although the incident happened a full year ago now, it doesn't seem to be something that people have easily forgotten and it's been very difficult for Will to make his way back into Hollywood. We all know that he was banned from the Oscars for the next 10 years and even if he was able to be nominated for an award, he would not be able to go in person to accept it. It's likely that a similar ban has already been placed when it
it comes to the Met Gala. Number 9, Kim Kardashian. For years, the Kardashians have been invited and are well known for not disappointing in the wardrobe department. But there's always been so many rumors going around about them getting uninvited. Just last year, one source who spoke to Page Six claimed that none of them are going to be invited in 2023, despite the fact that all five of the sisters went together in 2022. The first time Kim attended was in 2013. She said she actually cried after the event because she didn't know anyone and she was sure that no one wanted her there. She'd been trying to score an invite for years, but the fashion world did not accept her. For some people, it can be very difficult to get in. Years later, she became the center of controversy when she decided to wear the famous Marilyn Monroe dress that was worn by Marilyn herself. The reason why people were so enraged by this was because it didn't actually fit her. The dress was tailored to specifically fit Marilyn at the time. So in order for Kim to fit in this dress perfectly, she went on a strict diet and forced herself into the gown. But of course, she did end up damaging the dress simply because her proportions just didn't work. So most people don't ever want to see her attempt something like that ever again. Number eight, Lena Dunham. In a Letty Letter conversation with Amy Schumer, Lena Dunham indicated that she did not enjoy her time at the Met Gala. She said, you and I were literally sitting across from each other at the Met Ball. And it was like a crazy countdown to when we could escape. You were like, we're honored to be here. We're honored to be here. So just like Amy Schumer, she did not seem to enjoy the event whatsoever and had no issue letting everyone know that she had a bad time when it was over like a lot of other celebrities. But what really got people upset was her comments about New York Giants wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. So she was seated next to him at the gala, which most people would be excited about, but Lena still wasn't satisfied. Apparently he didn't speak to her at all when they were seated next to each other and she took that personally. She said, I was sitting next to Odell Beckham Jr. and it was so amazing because it was like he looked at me and determined I was not the shape of a woman by his standards. It was like we were forced to be together and he was literally scrolling on Instagram rather than having to look at a woman in a bow tie. Number seven, Donald Trump. Before he was president of the United States, Trump was a fixture at the Met Gala. It was there that he proposed to his third and current wife, Melania, in 2004. He appears to have worn the same tuxedo to the event every single year. While Melania's outfits varied a lot, she was often seen in lavish gowns from designers like Dolce & Gabbana, Vera Wang, and Roberto Cavalli. The Trumps used to be regulars at the event, but all that eventually changed somewhere around 2016. Ten months after he was inaugurated as president, Anna Wintour appeared on The Late Show with James Corden, and it was then that he asked her one very interesting question. He said, everyone from Beyonce to George Clooney attends, so my question is, who would you never invite back to the Met Gala? And I paused for a few seconds, and then she said Donald Trump. She didn't give a specific reason for not banning him from the gala, but she doesn't really need one. And has hosted the event since 1999, so whatever she says goes. Although it clearly has something to do with how New York has felt about the new president after he moved to the White House. It turns out that she's kept her word over the years because Trump's last appearance at the gala was back in 2012. Number six, Demi Lovato. The singer opened up about her experience at the Met Gala during an interview with Billboard in 2018, and she has not attended another one since. She said, I had a terrible experience. This one celebrity was a complete B and was miserable to be around. It was very clicky. I remember being so uncomfortable that I wanted to drink. It was pretty obvious that she was talking about Nicki Minaj. The two of them bumped into each other on the red carpet and things got very awkward. Demi then posted a picture on Instagram of the moment and it was hilarious. In the picture, you can see Nicki literally glaring at her like she didn't even try to hide the fact that she hated her. She captioned the photo saying, this picture pretty much summed up my first and probably last met. P.S. Some of y'all need to learn how to take a joke. I'm obviously laughing at the fact that number one, I look incredible incredibly awkward, and number two, that the shade was being thrown in this picture actually gives me life. Demi went directly from the event to an AA meeting, and she said, quote, I changed my clothes, but I still had my diamonds on, millions of dollars of diamonds on in an AA meeting. And I related more to the homeless people in that meeting who struggled with the same struggles that I deal with than the people at the Met Gala, fake and sucking the fashion industry's D. Number five, yes, yes. Tina Fey. The comedian has always been known for her honesty, so it's no wonder that she came clean with fans about her less than desirable experience at the Met. She spoke to David Letterman about her time attending the infamous event in 2010 with the theme of American woman, fashioning, and national identity. She said, if you had a million arms and all the people you would punch in the whole world, they're all there. It is so unbelievable. Clearly, I'll never go again, but you go and it's this beautiful space and it's just every jerk from every walk of life is there wearing like some stupid thing. Even though, that's, even though that stupid thing is often considered high fashion, it can look a little ridiculous when you compare it to regular clothing. Tina went on to call the event a jerk parade, so it's really interesting to see that not every celebrity is impressed with the Met, even if it takes them years to just score an invitation, and it's something that they have been waiting for for a very long time.
time. Sometimes a real thing turns out to be a major letdown. Number four, Lily Reinhardt. The actress thinks that she could be banned from next year's Met. During the Met in 2022, Lily spoke about the extreme diet that Kim Kardashian did in order to fit into her dress, which was once worn by Marilyn Monroe. While chatting with W Magazine, she said that attending the Met is always fun, but after going again, she doesn't think that she'll be invited back. Quote, I said a certain something about a certain person in a certain dress. I have always wanted to stand for something. While I don't like it if one comment by me turns into seven articles in People Magazine, I never overthink what I post. It has to be a true representation of how I feel. And I would say that whether I had a hundred followers or a hundred million. At the time, Lily criticized Kim's extreme diet and said, to openly admit to starving yourself for the sake of the Med Gala when you know very well that millions of young men and women are looking up to you and listening to your every word. The ignorance is otherworldly disgusting. Which is true, that's the reason that a lot of people took issue with what Kim Kardashian did at the Met. The controversy was not only about the fact that she lost weight to fit into the dress, it was also about the fact that she gave a lengthy interview about how she lost that weight. Number three, Zayn Malik. There's a theory that the former One Direction star has been banned from the Met Gala by Anna Wintour after a 2018 GQ interview resurfaced where he throws huge shade at the event. He spoke about his 2016 appearance with Gigi and he said, I did go, but I didn't go there to be like, yo, take me seriously. I was taking the piss. I went there as my favorite Mortal Kombat character, Jax. He went on to say that the Met Gala is not necessarily anything that he ever knew about or planned on going to. Zayn then doubled down on the fact that he would not normally think of attending. He said, now it's not something I would go to. I'd rather be sitting at my house doing something productive than dressing up in really expensive clothes and being photographed on a red carpet. To do the self-indulgent look at me, I'm amazing thing on the red carpet, it's just not me. So the way he was speaking about the event, you would think he was almost embarrassed to be seen there. So it's not entirely surprising that he only ever went that one time. Number two, Jamila Jamil. In October last year, the actress called out the Met Gala for their 2023 theme, which celebrated the late Karl Lagerfeld. She wrote, this man was indeed supremely talented, but used his platform in such a distinctly hateful way, mostly towards women. So repeatedly and up until the last years of his life, showing no remorse, offering no atonement, no apology, no help to groups he attacked. There is no explanation for his cruel outbursts. She went on to say that he stood against the Me Too movement, gay couples who wanted to adopt, and he was also fat phobic. Jamila went on to list the ways in which she believed that Carl was problematic and unhelpful to certain social movements. She said, why is this who we celebrate when there are so many amazing designers out there who aren't bigoted white men? What happened to everyone's principles and advocacy? You don't get to stand for justice in these areas and then attend the celebration of someone who revealed his own public disdain for marginalized people. However you characterize the German fashion designer, it is true that this year's event honored him. Apart from being a fashion legend, he was also known as someone who tells it like it is, even if that brought about a lot of controversy. Number one, Gwyneth Paltrow. The actress has always been considered a fashion darling, but she also keeps it real about how unfun such a prestigious event really is. She made it clear that she did not enjoy her time at the Met in the past. She once went on an Australian radio show and spoke to Kylan Jackie O about the event. She said, it sucked. It seems like it's the best thing in the world and you always think, oh my God, it's going to be so glamorous and amazing and you're going to see all of these people. And then you get there and it's hot and it's crowded and everyone's pushing you. This year it was really intense, it wasn't fun. So judging from all the celebrity interviews, it seems as though the Met Gala is not all it's cracked up to be. That same year, she also told USA Today that she did not have a good experience and would not consider returning to the event. Gwyneth straight up said, I'm never going again. It was so unfun. It was boiling, it was too crowded, I did not enjoy it at all. With comments like that, you would think it would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. After all, why would the event organizers or Anna Wintour herself be inclined to invite her back if she essentially trashed the gala? Especially because it is such a big deal in the fashion world when the event comes around every single year. Yeah.